today we're going to learn how to use the magic wand tool to make selections or cut out images here in Photoshop. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now today we're going to talk all about the magic wand tool, how it works, what settings are best for different situations, and how you can use this tool to make selections or cut out images in Photoshop. The magic wand tool is a little bit of a quirky tool since it has some advantages but it doesn't always work in every situation. So in this tutorial I'm going to break down what situations it works best in and what types of settings you can adjust to make the most out of this tool. So with all that said, let's engage comfort mode and hop into Photoshop. So when you first open an image in Photoshop and you want to access your magic wand tool, you're not going to immediately see it in your toolbar. And that's because it's hidden underneath your quick selection tool. So if you click and hold on the quick selection tool, you'll then find the magic wand tool right here. Now, once you've selected that tool, your settings bar will change. And this is where all the important stuff happens for the way your magic wand tool works. Now in a nutshell, the magic wand tool works by sampling a single color in your image and then using that to create a selection. So since I just sampled this yellowish green hue here, it has now sampled all of those similar colors within this photo. Now, obviously, if I was wanting to cut out this bird, this selection wouldn't be the best because it just selected the top of the image. However, we can now go through some of these settings to make this selection a little bit better. So I'm going to press Command or Control D just to deselect that, and we're going to go through each of these settings individually. So the first thing that you want to make sure of is that you have the new selection option checked off when you use the magic wand tool. So that means that every time you click, you're going to make a new selection on your photo based on the color that you're sampling. The next thing to consider is the sample size, and in this case we have the point sample. The easiest way to think of point sample is when you click somewhere on your image it's going to sample the color and luminance values of one pixel and it's going to try to find similar ones in your image to select. There are a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from but point sample is the default option and often works the best but we'll talk about some reasons why you might change that later on. Next up comes the tolerance and notice how when I click here the magic wand tool only selects a certain area and that's because it's selecting a certain hue and luminance value of color within my photo. So let's turn up the tolerance value and see what happens. So I'll put this to 100 this time and click in the same spot. Now you notice how it has selected almost the entire image and that's because the tolerance dictates how much similar hues and luminous values Photoshop will add into a single selection. There is a wider array of things that Photoshop is going to use as a sampling area versus if I went down and did something like five and then I clicked in the same area again, it's gonna be very specific about what types of hues and luminous values it wants to include in the selection area. So using the tolerance value is very helpful to help refine what is being sampled, what ends up being selected, and all that kind of stuff. Now I'll just reset this to 32 and I'll continue on to the contiguous option. Now at this point you notice how when I click on my image it only samples the background. It doesn't actually sample on the bird even though there are similar hues in the feathers here. Now watch what happens if I unclick contiguous and I do the same sample. Now all of these different colors within the bird and even on the branch here become selected. And that's because contiguous dictates whether or not your selection has to be one continuous thing. So in this case, since we have contiguous checked off, it is finding similar colors from this sample across the entire photo. So even though this area is not connected to this area, it still shares a similar hue and luminance value. So that means it's gonna be added to our selection. However, when we have contiguous checked off, sample in that area, Photoshop can only select similar hues and luminance values that are connected. So it can't jump the gap from here to here or it's somewhere in the feathers, for example. So contiguous makes it easier just to select a single area without going overboard and maybe selecting different colors within your subject or things that you don't want to select. With that said, there are times where turning off contiguous can be helpful, but we'll talk about that in our later example. For now, we're gonna to try to make a selection around this bird here. So keeping contiguous checked off, my tolerance at 32 and point sample, these are all essentially the default options that you'll have when you use the magic wand tool. So I'll start just by clicking and making that initial selection. And the problem is if I click 
around my image, it just makes a new selection every time. So how can I add to that selection area so it ends up creating a larger selection for me? What I can do is hold the shift key and notice how my cursor has a little plus icon beside it. Now I can click and it will add to that selection. So I'm holding shift, clicking around my image here, and it's gonna to continue to add to that selection area. And now I have a nice selection around the entire photo. Now in some cases, if there was a similar hue, it might select something in your subject, because in this case, these feathers kind of match the similar color to the background. So what we can do is hold the Alt or Option key, and notice how I now have a minus icon beside my magic wand cursor, and I can click anywhere on that selection to get rid of it. Now in this case, you notice how it has gotten rid of a whole bunch of the background which is not what we wanted. So this is where adjusting the point sample and tolerance can come into play. So I'm gonna undo that so we're back to where we started. So going back to the chin here, I just want this tiny area to get refined so it more just goes along the edge. So what we can do is first bring down the tolerance. So I'm gonna go down to something like 10 and see how that works. Now I'm gonna hold the Alter Option key and click and notice how this time it's not going and removing the selection from the background, it's being a lot more picky because we have lowered the tolerance value. So continuing to click along here, I can now refine that selection without the worry of the background selection being removed as well. And now with that, we have refined the selection really easily without affecting the initial background selection because we lower the tolerance value. Now you could have also changed the sample size, but the problem with this is when you're making those really fine and small adjustments, you don't want to have a larger sampling area. You only want to have a point sample so you have the smallest and most precise selection area possible. So with that, once you have your selection, you could either add this to a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon like so, pressing Command or Control I to invert that layer mask, and now you would have a cutout image. Or you could simply select your image layer and hit the delete key to remove that background. All right, so now you have a good idea of what all the settings do with the Magic Wand tool and we just went through a relatively complicated image to cut out with this tool. However, in our next example, we're gonna talk about the best type of situation that you can use the magic wand tool in. So in this photo, we have two very simple colors in the image. We, the background is a single color and the subject is also a single color. The reason that the magic wand tool does so well in this case is because it has a very easy time separating this color from the white. So when you go to sample this blue of the sky, it's not going to accidentally mistake this for the white. Whenever you're using the magic wand tool, these are the kind of images that are going to work the best when you're making selections because you're not gonna have to do as much adding to your selection or refining because it's gonna do a good job right out of the gate. So I'll reset my tolerance to 32 and I'll keep contiguous checked off for right now. With my image layer selected, I'll click once on my image and it makes a nice selection around the beams in this photo, but only in that one spot. Now the problem is we obviously want to select all of the sky in our image and we could hold shift and click between the different areas, but the problem with that is it involves a lot of clicking and I don't like clicking very much. So what we can do instead is uncheck the contiguous box click on the same area, and this time it's going to sample around the entire image. Since it didn't get this area right here, that's no problem, we can just hold shift to add to that selection, click again, and it's gonna add that into our selection. The only problem here is that you notice how it has selected a few white areas on the beam, and that's because it matches the color and luminance value found in this bottom blue hue here. So what could we have done to avoid this problem? We're gonna do the same selection again, except adjusting the tolerance for our additional selection. So first clicking here to make that initial selection area, but before we add to this brighter hue, which is causing the problems here, we'll lower the tolerance to something like 10. Now, if I hold the shift key and I click, notice how it has selected that sky, but the beam has not been affected, and that's because we lowered our tolerance, so Photoshop was being a little more picky with what it was actually choosing to select. So now, with all of that done, we can just press the delete key to delete that background, command or control D to deselect, and now we've cut out the beams super easily with pretty much one click. So again, this tool works best when you have a solid colored background with lots of contrast between the edges and the background of your photo. 
All right, guys, so that is how to use the magic wand tool in Photoshop. It works exceptionally well for selecting single colors or around a subject with very defined edges. Now, if you want to learn four of my favorite ways to cut out images in Photoshop, then make sure to check out my previous video sharing those four best tools in Photoshop. Although the magic wand tool works well for basic selections, it doesn't always do the best job for being really precise with those selection and cutout areas. So in this other tutorial, I share the best ways to do it so you can get perfect flawless selections every single time. So if you want to check out that video, you can find it down in the description below. Anyways, that is all I have for you for today. If you enjoyed today's video and you learned something, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference and consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brandon from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.